Now, no disrespect, but I'm a community activist, okay? And have been for the last 30, 40 years. And there's no way in hell uh, am I not objective enough to not allow my emotions to get so carried away about this situation where I'm going to call a bunch of hotheads from the community. Unless I'm really about that. And I really, and I got all the evidence I need because they done took my son and I done watched them drive him away or took my daughter and drove and I watched them, the inhabitants of the property. There's no way in the world, if anything, if I was going to go out there and represent, I would have went out there and represented with some kind of intelligence. I, 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 there's no way in the world I would have went out there for thinking that the police didn't do their job. So now, and even though I know I got distrust of the police, I also know that my brother is a police. Well, he was. He retired from the department. And so was my uncle. So was one of my friends. In fact, the head of the, uh, the police department here in Milwaukee. So I know how he grew up, and I know where he at. And I don't care what people say about them people. People got to survive. Most of the people that say, oh, you ain't this because you joined police departments. And you, I bet you them is niggas that... Don't uh, owe child support, and they don't owe child support. They don't. They don't um, plan on paying their child support, and they get mad because these brothers and took a job to support their families. Don't get mad at them. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. You can't say no black person should never join the uh, law enforcement. Ain't you ever seen the spook who sat by the door? So I, you ain't dealing with that kind of person that got total disrespect for law enforcement. My uncle was a fire chief battalion, okay, in the state of Indiana, Gary to be exact, the battalion chief. So I don't come from a, lo a line of people that just hate authority figures, okay? I, that's not me. I respect officers. And usually the ones I deal with, besides a few knuckleheads, respect me. I just got to keep it real. And not only that, I was a, a civil servant. Do that mean that all police officers are great? And they say, hell no. Just like any other job, you might work with a fucking racist. Happens every day. Police department ain't no exception. Probably find more racists there than any place else. However, that's not the situation at hand. He said he went to North 40th Street because of a home there had a reputation for housing missing children, and he intended to help find them. So he didn't amp the folks up, really, basically, in my opinion. People feel like the police don't do shit, May said. So a lot of this shit is us taking our own fucking, uh, 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 our own fucking lives into our own hands. Some of y'all may agree with that. Is that what you call taking your lives into your hands? Because guess what? You was wrong. You was wrong. And see, one thing y'all don't like about the police is because they do an investigation. Y'all don't respect the uh, art of an investigation. Yeah, some things should be uh, 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 dealt with right away. But most things should be investigated. Pretty much all things should be investigated. However you feel about that don't matter. Can't just go making no accusations and then jumping on that. When police searched the home in North 40th Street, Mays and others walked around the neighborhood, knocking on the doors and searching the girls. When they returned about 11 a.m., police had left the scene and the crowd had grown larger. Police later said that the girls were not located there, just as they had not been there the night before. The girls was out. Y'all don't want to deal with it. Minutes later, members of the crowd began poking around the backyard of the house. Mays is heard saying that people are again trying to enter the house. Why? Why? What is wrong with this thinking? You see the white man's influence on you? The mob mentality? But what no white people out there doing that? It was all black people with a mob mentality. 
a mob mentality. After somebody done told you the girl ain't in there, that wasn't good enough. Y'all gonna break into some old black people's house. Not white people's, black people's house. And terrorize black people up and down 40th Street. Minutes later, members of the crowd began poking around the backyard of the house. And then, again, Mays is heard saying that people are trying to enter the house. Three or four gunshots were then heard, followed by a pause. And then six more gunshots came. They don't even know what they're shooting for. What? For what? Even more before more gunshots, Mays repeatedly made the remarks about potentially there was a chaotic situation brewing. And here he is. Just picking and poking, picking and a poking, picking and a poking. He ain't throwing no water on that smoking, as Muhammad Ali would say. He's just picking and a poking. Now he's getting a little bit worried because even before the gunshots, now he's going, this house is going to come down. I'm telling y'all, it's too many people. It's too many people. But you done got to gather them all there. Look at this craziness, y'all. Through social media. About 11.15 a.m., police returned to the scene and Letty determined that someone in the house and someone in the crowd had exchanged gunfire. No injuries were reported. These people are trying to break into people's house, y'all. The people are trying to break into people's house and they don't even know what's going on. They ain't stole nobody, kids. You have no evidence that they did. But now you out there banging on the door. And see, I've been traumatized by that. By some police officers. Who I know was coming to kill us. Pulling on the doors. Pulling on the doors. And, the, and all the people that live downstairs in the front, downstairs in the back, wouldn't let the cops in. Okay? Because they knew they were after us because we had busted them snorting cocaine. Listen, I know I've, dig I I've digressed. So let me get back. Because I know what they're suffering from the police is real. The suspicion. The behavior. But that don't mean you throw out all reason and common sense. It's like they always, every time, going to react that way. Y'all pay them to do a job. Wait till they fall short. Man. Over the next several hours, police established a perimeter around the house while the crowd grew in size and the tension built. One of the people who was joined was Frank Nitty Sensenbaugh, one of the most prominent organizers in recent protests against police brutality uh, in Milwaukee, who also began his own hours-long live stream. In this video, Nitty can be seen trying to de-escalate things as the crowd jawed at the police in close proximity. But eventually, it was unclear when exactly and was not seen on video. Police said members of the crowd threw bricks and pieces of concrete at the officers. Staff with the Milwaukee Health Department Office of Violence Prevention and its 414 Life Team we're all sort of say working to ease the tension. So they have peer mediators out there trying to de-escalate the situation. About 3.15, the perimeter police established around the house vanished and crowd members can be seen entering the home, breaking windows. One person ran up to Nitty's camera claiming that a bloody pair of shorts he found in the home was evidence that the child had been harmed there. Oh God. A child. By 3.50 p.m., police were wearing riot gear and holding batons, arrived at the scene and stood between the crowd and the home. Police said they called for additional backup, but before it could arrive, the crowd surrounded the rear of the house and began to set it on fire, along with a nearby car and a couch. Firefighters were called to the scene, Route 522, 
and had to be escorted by officers in order to fight the flames. Now remember, the homes are very close together. So it's a possibility just like move in Philadelphia, this whole block can go up in flames. Six blocks. That's how, how uh, close the houses are together up there. Just as they arrived, however, gunshots were fired from the crowd, injuring a boy and a girl, both 14 years old. Now, we had to go out there and do a rescue in the middle of an angry crowd, Morales said afterward. Imagine how difficult that was. Imagine how difficult that was for the fire department to put out a fire when there's bricks and projectiles being thrown not only at the police, but at the fire department. I can't condone no shit like that. This was a pretty chaotic scene, Morales said. No officers fired a gun during the incident. And he did confirm that the department used non-lethal ammunitions on the crowd. Munitions, I'm sorry. He did not specify what munitions were used, but Nitty said tear gas was deployed. By 621, crowd members and the police were still clashing as fire crews worked on the house. Nitty's live stream captured shoving between the crowd and the group of officers standing right in front of the fire engine until police used some kind of chemical irritant to get them off of them. I'm surprised they didn't get shot. Nitty asserted that rubber bullets were also fired. Oh, what y'all expect? What the hell y'all expect? Y'all out there attacking them? This is a mob. This is not. This is not anything um, noble. This is a white mob with in blackface. All right. How about we name it that? Since y'all want to say only white folks gathering mobs like this in the neighborhood and pull people out and burn them down. I ain't never expected no black people to do this to another black family that was innocent in a black neighborhood that was innocent of all this stuff. Yeah, oh my God. Anyway, by 7.08, someone handed Nitty a bullhorn and he rallied a sizable portion of the crowd to march with him, which seemingly uh, largely quelled the unrest. But the violence didn't end there. Another shooting was reported at 7.30. In um, uh, the 400 block of West Lloyd Street, the 400 block, I'm sorry, near the scene. Several shots were fired at a vehicle, injuring a 24-year-old inside. Um, then shortly before 12.30 a.m., uh, police and fire crews again were called to the 2100 block of North 40 Street when the house in question was set on fire once again. During the ensuing emergency response, police said three officers were injured by the people throwing bricks at them. It's unclear where the two girls were found, but police said they were located by one of their mothers in the 3200 block of North 9th Street, more than three miles northeast of the house that was set aflame. During his Tuesday night press conference, Morales noted that the officer did not receive the cooperation we would expect from the family. The two girls denied ever being at the 40th Street house and ever knowing anyone who lived there. No evidence of human trafficking at the house was discovered. Rumors spread on social media as people live streamed from the scene to thousands of viewers sharing unconfirmed information. See, these cell phones going to get us killed in another way. See, I see the good they do. But damn, they can do some damage when people can't even wait and they're so emotionally un, 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 undevel underdeveloped that they'll jump the gun, jump out the fire, out the skillet, into the fire for no reason. Rumors spread on social media as people live stream from the scene to thousands of viewers sharing unconfirmed information. Like a game of telephone, the details morphed over time. How many children were missing? Could they be in the houses nearby? And what if any evidence was found in the home at the center of all the conflict to support the alleged sex trafficking? 
Police on Wednesday said many of the assumptions made Tuesday were untrue. The preliminary investigation revealed that no information has been provided to MPD to suggest that the teenagers were at the residence that was set on fire or that any foul play occurred at that location. The rumor mill whipped up a similar story in October when police were called to a home after reports of human remains were found in the backyard. See, this is kind of like a killer to Swati. Right? The allegations kicked around on social media were shocking. Five female victims, one of sex trafficking, were buried in the backyard, some said. But after an extensive search and hours of digging, documented on social media by onlookers, police found the remains of a dog. See, this is from the other side, okay? I, I, yeah, I, I got to keep my mind open. I can't listen to y'all fools and get on board with some craziness like this. Missing children investigations have long since been a source of tension. Yes, we have a very high uh, a, a child trafficking rate here. So I understand very well my friend Antonio Drew. Van, uh, Antonio Drew Van runs the program in Asha Family Services for missing girls. She works very extensively with child trafficking um, advocates and rescuers. I mean, police did not consider the two girls to be critically missing. And, that's, and that did not meet the criteria for Amber Alert. Under Milwaukee's policy, a missing person must meet at least one set of the criteria to be designated as critically missing. If a child is abducted, defined as unwillingly removed from a home or guardian's custody, that can trigger an Amber Alert. With descriptions of a child going out on a highway of billboards, sent out to phones and put out to the media. An Amber Alert goes out if the child is known to be in danger or serious harm or death and if the police have a description information about the child, the suspect or the child, the suspect's vehicle. It is not used for family abductions and runaways unless the child's life is in immediate danger. There's some rules to this, y'all. You can't just run out willy-nilly doing whatever the hell you think and they mostly want to have done. Families of missing women and girls of color and activists have repeatedly criticized the Milwaukee Police Department in recent years for its response to these kind of cases. And I agree, because that's exactly what they did to Jeff Dahmer and how he was able to run through this community and eat up people. So I get it. I get it. And I... I I get the poison that permeates all the police departments throughout America and beyond. Those search parties off the live stream for thousands of people to see can be effective. In 2018, prominent activist Tori Lowe helped track down a mixing 16-year-old girl who had been lured to Chicago by a stranger she met online and suffered weeks of abuse before being found. The live streams can broaden the number of people looking for a missing person, but it can also help rumors spread quickly and draw people out into a volatile situation. And if you don't have a spirit of discernment and don't have the type of mental mental uh, fortitude to wait to keep yourself a little more uh, uh, even keel till we find out something, you shouldn't be out there because you're probably going to be more destructive than positive. Families have often had an understandable fear that their loved ones may be a trafficking for sex. Milwaukee has a reputation as a hub. Y'all hear me? A hub for sex trafficking. My brother lives in the suburbs. And he was wondering why one of a, this, this guy got all kinds of Bentleys. And he said he's not selling dope because... Nobody sells. This is mostly cops live on this block or ex cops. And what is this dude doing over? What are he doing? Counting stacks and stacks of money. 
on YouTube. Come to find out he was a child trafficker. So we know it's real. Oh, God. In 2018, report of estimated 340 young girls and children were victims of sex trafficking in Milwaukee in a four-year period. And about a quarter of those victims had been at one point reported missing from a foster care or group home situation. Because we got so many kids in group homes and foster care. And I want to do a, an extensive video about that a little later. Man, this, this right here. State Representative John Obrofstoff of Milwaukee arrived at the scene Tuesday afternoon after hearing about it on social media. In an interview Wednesday, he questioned why police responded in tactical gear and an armored vehicle, which uh, he said inflamed the tension and was not effective in de-escalating the situation. They had all that stuff out there. And, and what? People still got hurt. Buildings still got burned down. Black residents' interaction with police are largely more negative and more violent than anything he's experienced as a white man, Brofstoff said. And that's trauma traumatizing for many. Yeah, because we don't trust your asses. We don't. My brother, no. They don't trust your asses either. He's glad to get up. Never mind. Let me go on. The mere presence of heavily armed police coming to a residential neighborhood, bringing tank-like gear, it even further escalates the situation, especially when there are other ways to handle this. As the national conversation around law enforcement funding centers around possible alternatives to police, Brofstoff said police that unrest provided a chance for more scrutiny in the Milwaukee Police Department budget. Having more money for those preventative measures and less money for more heavily military uh, militarized police force is going to elicit, escalate the situation, cost more money, upset more people, and get more people hurt. Yes, that's the conversation we need to have right now. This article was done by Mary Spicuza from the Milwaukee Journal staff. Um, uh, and so I'm not saying there's, an easy, there's easy answers to this. I know a black family got burned out. I know another woman was in the hospital having a baby and she don't have a home to come to because it was burned down to the ground. Because somebody thought they thought they didn't have evidence or no proof now. Somebody thought now you put yourself in them shoes before you begin with your commentary. I want to know how y'all feel. Just put yourself in your shoes that live there. And these people trying to break in your house. And they ultimately ended up setting it on fire. I want to know what y'all think. All right. If you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And I'm going to see you in the next video.